Hey, what's up, Musers? This is John at muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And there was just recently a major update to the Muse Motion 2 widget. Uh, you can now add audio, and there's a new sequence set up for the sequence widgets, which allows for faster load time uh, when working with the widgets. Uh, so I have an example site here. It's kind of an infographic of a mobile app website. And um, I've added sound to it and motion with the Muse Motion 2 widget. So if I click refresh, we have sound with motion. Um, it's a lot of fun and there's just quite a few updates to the widget and it just makes it for you know easier to use and you can now add sound to it. Um, so I'll go over all the updates and to access this widget, uh, you simply go to museforyoushop.com and then here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widget widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Uh, the only widget that's not in the subscription is the Muse Morph. Uh, there will be a Muse Morph Lite coming out soon that will be in the subscription. Um, this is just using the Morph SVG plugin technology technology from Greensock, which requires a shockingly green Greensock membership, but um, the good folks at Greensock allowed me to offer the Muse Morph widget in my shop as an individual widget. But this is just a really advanced technology, and it's just a really great widget. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, um, there will be a Muse Morph flight uh, probably by next week, so it'll allow for, it will allow for simple morphing, um, but this is just really advanced morphing uh, for SVG morphing here. Okay, so here we have the Muse Motion 2 widget, um, and here are, is the uh, description. Here you can click Add to Cart to purchase individually, or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Um, and here we have a description of everything it, um, you can do with the widget. And here is the Muse Motion 2 widget 1.1. This was the recent update. And I'll go ahead and read all of the updates. So we have a new widget setup for the sequence widgets, which allows for faster load time for the widget. Um, ability, ability to add audio to each motion uh, in a sequence, ability, ability to add unlimited motions to a, se to a sequence, yeah, so you can add as many motions as you'd like. Uh, before it was eight, and um, I actually have to update these images here, but before, as we can see, there's eight here. Um, now you can add unlimited motions to your sequence. Um, and there's the ability to play motion in reverse after it is finished playing forward. Um, there's the ability to repeat the on scroll motion every time the element is scrolled to. Before you can only have the motion uh, trigger once when scrolled to, but now the motion can repeat every time it's scrolled to. So if it goes off the uh, browser and then comes back in, the motion can repeat. Um, and the ability to continuously play motion on hover, yeah, on hover or stop the motion each time the mouse leaves the element. So when you hover over your mouse the element, and then you leave the mouse off the element, if you select the on hover um, sequence start, or motion start, um, the motion can keep playing or it can stop the motion and restart it from the beginning. And then when you hover again, it'll replay. Um, there's the ability to set a delay, repeat, and repeat delay over the entire sequence. And there's abbreviated widget names for easier access when searching in the library panel. And there's updated code in the widget. Uh, so those are all the updates um, and it just makes it for, you know, makes it really fun to use the Muse Motion 2 widget. Okay, so I'll open up my Adobe Muse website and this is what it looks like in Adobe Muse. Okay, so I'll go to File, New Site and I'll click OK and I'll double click on the home page. And I'll go ahead and bring in those different elements that I have in the infographic. So I'll go into my finder and I have this image that I downloaded from Adobe Stock. So I'll right click, open with Adobe Illustrator. Okay, and here we have the image. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to copy all of these elements as, as SVG, which makes it really easy uh, to use Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Muse together. So I'm going to copy all of these elements, and so I'll just hit Command-T on my keyboard, go into Adobe Muse, and then uh, Command-V to paste. And this is just, this is just going to act as a reference. When I paste all the individual elements, I'll know where to place the individual elements together. So now I'll go into Adobe Illustrator, I'll click on the elements, and let's see, so these are already ungrouped, so I'll just uh, check these elements here. I just want these lines first. So I'll hold down Shift to select multiple elements, and then I'll hit Command-C to copy. I'll go into Adobe Muse and Command-V, so we have those lines there. And I'll move this over to the left. We'll go into Illustrator, and then I'll copy this circle here in the background. So I'll hit Command-C, then Command-V in Adobe Muse. I'll right-click, Arrange, Send to Back just like that, and I might have to work with the layers panel just to uh, move the different elements around. 
Um, then I'll go into Adobe Illustrator, I'll copy this first phone, so I'll select these elements. I'll hit Command-C to copy, then Command-V to paste, so I have that phone there. I'll go into Illustrator, I'll select the second phone, and I'll lock the lines here and the circle. So I'll go to Object, Lock, Selection. That way when I'm selecting these elements, um, I can just select the elements here without selecting the background circle. Um, and I'll delete these shadows here for these elements as well. Because uh, sometimes when pasting SVG, the shadows don't show up as well. So there's just these little shadows behind some of the elements uh, there. Okay, so I'll copy the second phone here and I'll paste just like that. And I'll copy this phone here with the arrow. Yep, just like that and paste. And I'll copy this element here, paste, looks good. And I'll copy this phone here and paste, perfect. And this here, I think it's a protractor is what it's called. I don't know how I remembered that. Okay, uh, and then I'll copy this here and paste. <clears throat> and I'll copy the computer here. Okay, and paste. And then I'll copy this arrow here with the arrow just like that. Copy and paste. Okay, so we have all the elements. Now I'm just gonna reference this image here and I'll make it a little bit smaller um, so we can reference it. Okay, so we have the circle here in the background. The phone is behind the line, so we'll send it back. And we'll do something like that. And I'll go to my layers panel. And I will have to select some of these layers so we can select the circle in the background. Once I find it there. And we'll bring it all the way to the back. Okay, so there's the circle. Um, and then we have the phones, so let me bring all of this down a little bit. Uh, we have the phones, or we have this little element here. Uh, we'll bring it like right there. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, then we have this phone here, which is right about there. We have this phone and this phone. All right. Yeah, that looks good. And then we have these arrows, here, this arrow. Uh, we have this protractor. Uh, so let's see. So I'll bring this phone up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's the protractor. Then we have this element here, and then the computer. Okay, that looks good. Uh, looks pretty close to uh, this here. Everything is on top or below each other, and we have all the elements there. So I'll go ahead and delete this, and I'll move this protractor up a little bit just like that. And now I'll bring in the Muse Motion 2 widget. Um, so I'll go into my library panel. Um, if you don't see your library panel, you can go to Window and click on Library. Um, and there is a new abbreviation for the Muse Motion 2 widget, and it's now MM2. So you can just type in MM or MM2, and here are the Muse Motion 2 widgets. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is click Add First. So I'll click, hold, and drag, and place onto my Adobe Muse website and I'll just place it at the top there. Uh, so now I want to bring in a 2D sequence because I'm not going to add, add any 3D motion. Uh, so I'll click, hold, and drag and place the Muse Motion 2 uh, 2D sequence right in there. Okay, and now the biggest difference with the sequence widget is that we now have these three uh, widgets uh, right away. So these first three widgets. Um, and this first widget is called the beginning. This middle one is the middle, and this last one is the end. So the beginning uh, controls the instance number, the delay, the repeat, the repeat delay, and it allows you to enable reverse play over the entire sequence. Uh, the middle is the motion. Now, uh, for those who have used uh, the first version of the Muse Motion, uh, you've probably noticed that it, the load time wasn't that great when you placed it into Adobe Muse, uh, and that's because there were so many widget options. Uh, so now um, you only have one, one motion per, per widget. So here, this one widget controls the graphic style name Motion 1. So if I apply uh, Motion 1 to this element, uh, this widget will allow you to add all the motion to that to just that one element. And you can add the audio here, so this option is new as well. You can add audio when the motion plays in the sequence. And here's a, a description uh, of what to do with this middle widget. So I'll read it. It says, to add another motion to the sequence, copy and paste this widget, 
Place the copied widget after this widget and before the end widget in, in red. Change the graphic style name for the new motion and then assign the motion to an element on your Adobe Muse website via the graphic styles panel. Uh, so if I wanted to add another motion, I'd just move this end here and I'd hit Command C to copy and then Command V to paste and place this another middle one uh, in between uh, the end and the previous motion. Uh, so now I can just change the graphic style name and apply uh, a new motion to a new element in the sequence. Okay, so for now I'm gonna delete this because there's a nice and quick way to animate this entire sequence. Um, but before we animate it, we actually need to apply uh, graphic style names to all of these elements in the sequence. Um, so I'll click on this first element, I'll go to graphic styles, I'll create a new graphic style and I'll call this motion one. So we're going to do motion one through, um, I believe it's eight, uh, two, motion two, go to this element, uh, motion three, and I'm just going in sequence. So in the sequence, you want the motions to play. That's how you'll number them. I'll go to this element and I'll say motion four. I'll go to the phone here and I'll say motion five. Uh, I'll go to the protractor. Um, I'll say motion six. I'll go to this element. I'll say motion seven. I'll go to the computer and I'll say motion eight. Okay, and I probably could have gone more than eight just to demonstrate that you can add more than eight now, but um, eight looks nice for this infographic here. And I'll move this phone over a little bit or here we'll do something like that. Okay, yeah, let me just do motion eight again here. Okay, and let me just move this middle one. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Okay, so now we've uh, assigned eight different graphic style names to each of the elements. Uh, so now for this first motion, uh, we can just go here and because the graphic style name is motion one, it's gonna apply the motion to this first element. Um, so I just want these elements to scale and I want the easing to be uh, elastic, just like that. So if I go to file preview page and browser, this first element is elastic and it comes in just like that. And because we have enabled reverse play, we can see that the element keeps repeating and it goes backwards and it plays forward. Uh, to change that, we'll just go into the uh, the beginning widget here and uncheck enable reverse play. And I didn't go over the end widget, so I'll go over that now. The end widget is what controls the triggering of the sequence. So you can uh, trigger it on load or on scroll and you can change the time scale to change the overall speed of the sequence. So if I change this to three, um, it would be a bit faster. Um, and then for the on scroll, we have the graphic style name here for on scroll. Um, and this is the element that will trigger the on scroll. So if I have it set to motion one, once this first element reaches the bottom of the browser, if it's at 100% from the top of the browser, um, this first element will trigger the, the sequence on scroll. If I set it to motion five, which is the phone here, or yeah, motion five, um, once this phone reaches a certain point within the browser, then it would trigger the sequence and you can set it the on scroll offset from the top of the browser. And then you can repeat the sequence on scroll scroll or just have it play once. Um, and then you can assign the play buttons like in the previous versions, uh, you just create the play buttons and then assign these graphic style names uh, to the play buttons and it will control the entire sequence. Okay, so there, those are the options for the end widget, and this does have to be the last widget in the sequence for that particular uh, sequence. Uh, if you have multiple sequences, then you would change the instance number here and the instance number for all of the beginning, middle, and end widgets. So each of them has a sequence, and the sequence has an instance number, and you would just change the instance number uh, for each of the, the widgets so that if you had, let's say, two Muse motions or two sequences, um, you would just make sure that uh, you would change the, the instance number for, let's say the second sequence would have instance number two for all the widgets. Okay, so we've assigned all the graphic style names and we've assigned um, a motion to motion one, which is this phone here. So if I go to file preview page and browser, this phone has an elastic scaling in and it is repeating. So we don't want it to repeat either. So we'll just go into the sequence, the beginning widget options and we'll say, uh, zero for repeat. Uh, negative one repeats the, the motion infinitely. Um, and one thing that's great about just having one widget at a time is that that you can now uh, have it repeat just, so the sequence essentially only has this one element animating and it doesn't see these other elements until we assign a motion to those other elements. In the first version, um, it actually looked at all eight motions. So the first motion would animate and then you'd have to wait 
quite a quite a while or you know wait till um, the Muse Motion went through and looked for the other eight. But now because of the new uh, sequence setup, when you add the widget, that's when the Muse Motion will, will look for that motion. Um, so you can have two elements in the sequence, and if you have two and you want them to repeat, um, then you would just enable the repeat here, and it would only repeat these two, two elements. Okay, so now that we've added the motion to the first one, I'm going to add audio. So I'm going to click Enable Audio. I'm going to click Add File, and I have these nice uh, these nice audios here that I actually got from uh, the website is here that I got from rcptones.com/dev underscore tones. I'll leave a link in the description area below, and they just have amazing uh, sounds for web apps and mobile apps, and they just sound really great. So these are some free ones, but they have just so many. They have a lot here, um, and you can get them all for 35, which I think is really cool or really great uh, for adding audio. Um, it's a good price, and you get so many audios, and they just sound really clean and really nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add audio. So uh, I'm gonna select the pop here. Let me just put it in a list. Uh, we have this pop. Uh, yep, we have this pop drip bloop here which uh, sounds really great. So now if I go to File, Preview Page, and Browser, we have this element here. I'll click Refresh, and there we go. We have the pop, drip, bloop, so the element animates, and there's audio to it. Uh, so now that we've assigned this animation or this motion to this first element, all we have to do is copy this widget and change the graphic style name for each of the widgets for each of these elements to have uh, motion to it in the sequence. So I'll bring the end widget down, and I'll hit Command-C to copy and Command-V to paste this widget. And then I'll copy these two, paste it two more times, copy these two, or paste these two, just like that. And we'll move it down a little bit more, and I'll paste two more, just like that. All right, and I'll place it right there. So all the motion widgets have to be in between the beginning and end widgets here, which this one is in blue, and this one is more of a red color here. Okay, so now I'll just go into each of the widgets, and as you can see, it opens very quickly, um, so you can easily access all the motions in each of the widgets. Uh, so here I just have to change the graphic style name to Motion 2, and then I'll go through each of them and just change the graphic style name, just like that. Motion 6, and Motion 7, and Motion 8. Okay, and that's it. So if I go to File, Preview Page, and Browser, we have the motion, and it is a little bit slow, so I'm gonna speed it up, actually. So I'll go into Adobe Muse, and actually let me close this here first. I'll go into Adobe Muse, and in the end widget, we'll change the time scale, so I'll say three, so we'll make it three times as fast. So I'll go to File, Preview Page, and Browser. There we go. And there it is. And just like that, we have a really nice infographic animation with sound and motion. Um, so that's all I'm going to cover in this video tutorial. Video tutorial. Um, I just wanted to go over the new sequence setup for the Muse Motion 2 widget and go over the audio update as well. Um, if you did have multiple audios, you would want to change the audio instance number. So for instance, if I was in the went to the second motion and I changed the the second uh, audio to be basic here, this uh, other audio, I want to change the inst the audio instance number to two. So every time you have a new audio, you want to change the audio instance number for, for that audio. So I'll go to File, Preview Page, and Browser. We have the first one. This first one didn't make a sound. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you have to refresh for it to reload the elements. All right. Looks good. Okay, so that can make for a really fun uh, motion or really fun sequence on your Adobe Muse website. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, I will be making more video tutorials with the Muse Motion 2 widget, but I did want to showcase the the new sequence setup and the uh, the audio for the widget and the 2D transformations with without a sequence. Um, they allow you to apply a lot of motion to just one element, and you can now play those in reverse as well, and you can repeat and repeat delay. Um, so I'll just bring in that widget to kind of showcase it real quick. So I'll type in MM2, and I'll just bring in the 2D transformations. And 
Yeah, so here we have the on scroll. Yeah, you can now repeat the motion on scroll for the individual transformations. Um, and then for the hover, um, you can have it stop or continuously play on hover. And I'll show that in another video tutorial. Um, and here you can select enable reverse play. Um, and then everything else is just like it was. You can you can use all these motions and apply it to your Adobe Muse element. Okay, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, to access this widget, you simply go to museforyoushop.com. And here you can click on the pop-up. And here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Again, uh, the only widget that's not part of the subscription is the Muse Morph widget, uh, just because um, it is using the Morph SVG plugin technology from Green GreenSock, which requires uh, the shockingly green GreenSock membership but uh, the good folks at GreenSock have allowed me to offer it as an individual widget uh, in the shop. Okay, and if you did want to purchase the Muse Motion 2 widget individually, you just click here, and here you can click Add to Cart to purchase individually, or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. And down here are all the updates that I went over, or I went over most of them, uh, but here you can read all the updates. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.